I do it, everyone. It is Sunday, and it means it's time for broadcast. Now, if you've never tuned in to broadcast before, where have you been? You're more than welcome to your co-off. Get yourself sat down. I'll make you a cup of tea. And the way it works here on broadcast is it's hosted by me, Billy Kirkwood. Relax. It's the same for everyone. I've never heard of me either. But what you might have heard of is Broad Beard Oils. They help bring you this free each and every Sunday. And of course, wherever you get your podcasts for Audible Online. But we bring you this on Facebook. We bring you this on Twitter. And we bring you it on YouTube live each and every Sunday. And the way this works is it's an alternative lifestyle podcast. It's constantly evolving. Sometimes it's me and my friend Tragical Hara talking about random topics, just making you laugh and having a bit of a silly old time for 40 minutes to take your, your head out the world. Or maybe sometimes we are bringing back this, our list of amazing guests that we've had. We have had musicians, we have had uh, BDSM models, we have had wrestlers, we have had actors, we've had guitar players, we have had, uh, we've basically had everyone. We've, we've, we've even had ninjas on the show. And this month, I'm very, very excited to bring you this special guest because we're always big proponents, of course, in the Brotherhood. Wherever you are over the last couple of years, you know, we've all found ourselves going through, well, some. Some difficult times, and this is the episode for you because we're getting an opportunity to talk to Kevin Mullen. And Kevin Mullen is what the UK's fastest growing hypnotherapy and mind programmer. He helps deal with mental health, he helps deal with people's anxiety. That's how I found him. This was about a year ago. I approached Kevin uh, after I found him on social media. He helped me a whole bunch, and I know that mental health is not only something that JJ that signs the checks here at Broadbeard uh, wants to talk about but it's also something that you wherever you are so regardless if you're one of the sexy bearded mfers from the braverse whether you're a bra wife a bra widow any of the above uh, regardless of where you are in the world whether it's your first time ever tuning in on the show this is one you're not going to miss now we've managed to get some time with Kevin he's on like a big media run as he is on the run up to his huge show December 3rd at the Royal Concert Hall now he gave away a couple of revelations and a couple of secrets about some stuff you can expect if you go to that event he has these huge events he does uh, workshops and so much more but this event he's going to be doing at the Royal Console was the first one that he's done of this size since the pandemic when he was having people from all walks of life who are either dealing with depression or anxiety or maybe they are just coming to learn a bit more about themselves. He said they are going to leave completely different people. I am very excited. I can speak very, very highly of Kevin's work myself, but I know other people that I've spoken to. Hey, listen, get on your Google machine, have a little look or head over and check out your social media or on TikTok and then come back here to broadcast and join us because he doesn't get the opportunity to do a lot of these long form interviews and Kevin gave us about 40, 50 minutes of his time which we're very, very excited about. We put some of the topics, some of the questions that you guys had sent in to Kevin and this episode we are calling Mental Health the truth. We learn a little about him, we learn a little bit about how the mental health system in the UK works, we learn a little bit about, well, a little bit about ourselves. Was that a little cliched? I didn't know it was a little cliched, but you know something, I'm keeping it in, god damn it. Who knows, maybe the inbox will fill with someone that wants that type of prattle. Uh, but I tell you what, let's head over and check out. Now, it's one of these weird ones, because I'm here in the home studio, but you know, this one was pre-recorded, so I've got to hand over to Billy in the future. On the past. The debate rages on that. Either way, he's wearing dungarees and looking like a bit of a flump. I honestly don't know what I'm thinking about these dungarees. I, they seem to look at least alright standing up, but sat down a little like a fat goth Chucky. So, let's go with it anyway. Let's hand over to Billy from the past, who I'm sure is doing a cracking job. Already have done so. Thank you, Billy, in the past. Thank, uh, you. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. That, I've not heard that. What a sure job. Before. What a job he would have done, I'm sure. That Ke was amazing. I thought so. I thought so. Kevin, uh, Thank you so much for joining us on broadcast. You are very, uh, very welcome. Very, very excited. Now, we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago because you've got some, yeah. you've got some big events coming up, first of all. Yeah. Uh, we're at the concert hall on December 3rd, which is huge. Right. Uh, and tell us a little bit about that event before we get uh, sort of into the nuts and bolts. So, everybody in this day and age seems to be struggling with anxiety and depression. It's uh, it's like it's every second person you speak to has got it. Yeah. And as an individual therapist, I can see one person at one time. I can do twelve hours a day. I can do six days a week, and that 
doesn't even make a dent yeah. in what's happening out there. Um, so I had an idea and it was, well, what if we could affect and what if we could get to around f 500 people right. in one day and have at least 98 to 100% and then walk out the room completely different to what they walked into it. And that's where the concert hall came from. 500 people, one day, me changing every single one of them. Now, in terms of uh, uh, sort of our journey getting to know each yeah. other, uh, how I, uh, and it shows you the power of, uh, uh, of social media, I'm not sure, uh, I discovered you on, on TikTok originally. Oh, we like TikTok. Oh, it was TikTok. It was TikTok, TikTok I described you. And, and a couple of different things come I was, first of all, uh, and I've, I've been quite open about issues I've had yeah. in the past. Uh, um, I, I wasn't sure because originally, I think particularly during lockdown, there have been lots of talks of you know people suffering with depression and not being able to, yeah. to do anything about it or not being able to mobilize themselves to even look about it. That was for me, a therapist was something that was in a, you know, is in a New York uh, office yeah. somewhere on a couch, you know, looking like Billy Crystal or something. That is kind of where I had been. But when I discovered you on TikTok, you were, at that time, you were talking about anxiety and that thing that first video and even then when you were breaking it down in language that I had never heard and kind of spoke directly to me it was like oh this this how I've been feeling for these last couple of years it might be something I think I'm gonna get in touch with this guy I think I'm gonna get in touch with this guy reaching out to people in a different way was that something you always wanted to do to kind of distance yourself from like other therapists yeah um the majority of therapists, not all therapists, and if there's a therapist watching this, he's probably, or she's probably about to get very, very upset. Okay, okay. Um, the well, we like that, we like the, that. <laughs> the majority of therapists, believe it or not, are very self-indulgent, and right. they want to prove their worth, and they do that with uh, vocabulary, with terminology, with big, deep and meaningful explanations right. that mean absolutely nothing to you. And the more I looked at that, and the more I studied it, I was bored shitless, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. When you talk about neuroscientific alignment levels and firing processors yeah. and amygdalas and hippocampuses and all these parts of the mind, and I was getting bored with it. And I was like, when I went to university to study this, um, I was picked by the British Army to go to university and I'll always remember it. I was in this big theatre and there was about 300 psychology students there and this guy done a lesson on intrinsic versus extrinsic motivators. Okay. Um, and at the end of it, I was, I was clueless. Honestly, it made no sense to me. And I'd been motivating and driving people for 20 years before that in yeah. the British Army as a warrant officer. And I remember I put my hand up and it was, everybody was in this big room, all these very well-educated people, of course. And I said, can I be honest? And he's like, yeah, of course, uh, Sergeant Major, uh, fire away. And I was like, right, I didn't understand a single thing you meant I want you to imagine, Professor, I'm 12, and I want you to explain that to a 12-year-old so he gets it and it makes a difference to him. Right. And he took about 30 seconds, he actually said what it meant, and I was like, I get that. So when I come into the world of therapy and started doing videos and social media, yeah. I want to make it simple, I want to make it so people can go, that was that, that is that, and that's what we do. <gasps> That's why, ah, because you see, when we understand why we are like we are, yeah. we can then understand the steps to change it. So uh -huh. I make it really simple. You really make it digestible and understandable and for people. People actually get it. And I think one of the common threads in all my comments is, I've never looked at it like that before and I got it in an instant. And, and that's well, why we keep it simple. That, that's what happened with me, effectively. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then I was delighted to find out you were local. And at that time, well, this works out really well. Yes. In fact, we are in the very, we are in the very room. That's Right. where we first met, which is weird because it's just as I was coming up to the stairs. It seems like a lifetime ago now, uh, last December, if I yes. think. Because I remember going like, oh, I'm so busy with Christmas. I'm so busy with such and such. I don't really have to. Oh, I'm going to go anyway. And, and, and in all fairness, to you, I remember, you did not mess about. It was like, right, okay, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday 5 o'clock, whatever yeah. it was, Tuesday 7 o'clock. It's like, oh, no, but oh, I just... And I don't know if it's the world that we're kind of become accustomed to. I thought, like, oh, it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be weeks away. It's going yeah. to be such um, and such. Traditional therapy, again, you know, there's a big waiting list and then there's an 18-week treatment plan for you and we're going to look at you over six months and at the end of that six months, we'll say, so how do you feel when you're like... Mm, I kind of feel a bit better. I'll be honest with you. If I've seen MD for six months and they don't have a complete enough to change and they feel a little bit better, I'm throwing myself out the window. <laughs> That's not how therapy needs to be. It's the old way of doing it. It's very antiquated. It's very outdated. Let's get you in. Let's go. Let's see what's happening. What's wrong? What do you think? What do you feel? Now, let's change it. And when you do it that way, 
Well, you've seen the results. You, well, I've, it's, I've it's seen the results. Different. I know other people you've treated yeah. that have seen the results in, 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 in overabundance. Uh, um, in terms of uh, what you what you do, how you want to make it different from everyone else, because like I think the first one we did was quite intense. Yeah. It was like four weeks of in, intensity. Um, is that because of well we can we're going to jump about a little bit but is that because of the uh, uh, emergency of what's going on in the planet you want it, like you say you don't want people to be getting the six month plan you want people to show that effect because and I think you were the first person I ever heard use this this phrase and it's funny because it's become a catchphrase now out there in social media was there's a mental health pandemic yeah. and it's not it's coming it's here. Um, how do, how do you face on to that because that must be quite daunting in its own way. When you, not, let's go way back before even COVID yeah. with, you know, the taxis and the jobs and the interview process. Have you not noticed everything that is good or worthwhile for you in your life takes you a long time to achieve? You have to work into the perfect job. You have to save to get the perfect car. You have to date, get it right, get it wrong to get the perfect partner. Everything takes a while that's good in life. Agree? Yeah, no, 100%. However, everything that is bad in life is instant. I look at that and think, well, why does it have to be that way? It's not set in stone. It's not etched anywhere that it has to be that way. So I just got the mindset and took the therapy to give good instantly and bad would take a long time to get to you. So I just reversed life, if that makes sense. Oh, wow. I never looked at it like that. Honestly, think about it. <laughs> Everything like you've got, honestly, think about it. Anything you've got at all that's really good that you've had to work hard for, it's taken you a while to get there. But when something bad happens, it's like, boom, it's done. You're there. That's over. Yeah. Why can't we do that with good? Because let's look at it. People will say, well, I just need this job or I need this amount of finances. I need this and then I'll be happy. Well, why not just be happy now and do it? Yeah. We're and also so hesitant we as well. Like we, we did those four intense yeah. sessions to start with. And I always remember uh, end of session number one. I, think, I don't think my wife was in the car. Maybe my wife came and picked me up. I don't <laughs> remember where we were. Um, um, but I always remember going, how do you feel? And going, um, better. And being, but you almost being hesitant to yeah, accept yeah. the fact that I felt better. Is that is that a common thing? People come here all the time. Uh, they come here, they come to Glasgow, whatever it is, um, and they're like, oh, "I'm really, I'm really nervous." And I'm like, "I expect you to be nervous. Yeah. I'm really sceptical, or I'm really hesitant." And again, I am not the conventional therapist. Mm. I have to look at what they're doing and what they're saying, and, and actually find the truth behind it. Because not everything we say, although it's real, is actually true. Mm. An MD that says they're hesitant or they're sceptical, what they're really saying is they're scared. Right. They're scared that it's not going to work for them. They're scared they're going to waste their time with me. They're scared they're going to get it wrong. And when you diminish that fear and let them know it's OK and there's no set process, that relaxation happens straight away. And already you've won. And you've not even done any work. Yeah. It's about the mindset and the perception of that person. Scepticism, pessimism, it's just fear. Hmm. And when you can work out what fear is, you can then use it as opposed to let it <gasps> control you. And there is about 99% of clients that come here are like, I'm really sceptical. Uh, I read all these reviews, I hear these people talking about you, I see these celebrities and I see you in the media and in the papers and on the radio and I'm like, can't be that easy. And I'm, I'm not rude with it, I'm like, it is that easy, you're just not doing it. Right. No, but it can't be. But it is. I just need to show you how, because there's nothing in life, believe it or not, and I'll toe-to-toe I'll -toe empty with this, there is nothing in life you cannot do. Nothing. There's a million things you don't know how to do, but you didn't know how to drive before you learned. You didn't know how to walk before you learned. You didn't know how to read, write, be a husband, be a father. Didn't know any of that shit. You learned. You can learn how to control your thoughts. You can, can learn how to control these emotions. And when you learn it and you do it, yeah, it's all over. It's all over. Yeah, you get locked in. Yeah, you get, you get obsessed in. with it. It's, it's, I think the, one of the phrases that hit me, and I've even got a tattoo on my arm, believe it or not, That's as right. a reminder, stress equals fear, yes, um, which was a key thing for me. I, I kept going because I kept feeling stressed in weird situations. Yeah. We talked about it. It's like, I feel, why, what, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Why am I stressed in this situation and then it was what what was I scared of from the simple thing and I'm sure any any dad can identify with this any mum can identify with this during lockdown I, I would get stressed that all I was doing was in the living room with the kids on those dark mm -hmm. nights 
so what was the fear that I wasn't going to go anywhere else? Well, why didn't I just stand up and go? Like, why didn't I yeah. go upstairs? Why didn't I go and work out? Why didn't I go and take the dog walk? And then I realised very quickly, oh, I'm, I'm completely removing the stress because I've figured out yeah. what it was based on, on what you were saying. Um, have you had loads of people having revelations like that over the years? Um, Yes, but I've never had anybody had a tattoo of what I've said. <laughs> so for that, I thank you. Well, well I've also got his face right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you should see what's on my heart. <laughs> um, but no, um, again, look, I, I'm, really, I'm really disgruntled by the conventional word of therapy, I have yeah. to be honest. Um, what's, what's wrong with therapy then? Because we, we've chatted about it, you've yeah. said how it's antiquated. Um, okay, so... The, the majority of people that practice therapy, it's a talk-based approach. You're going to come in, you're going to sit down, I'm going to ask you how you're feeling. You're going to tell me how you're feeling at this present moment in time. I have no problem with that because it's present moment in time. Mm -hmm. I'm then going to say to you, well, think back. Now, there's the first problem. Because when you understand the evolution of emotion, and what I mean by that is the words we speak create the thoughts we have. Right. The thoughts we have create the feelings that we get, the emotions as they are. And it's what we feel is how we act. Okay. Our words create our thoughts, our thoughts create our feelings. Let me prove it to you. You've got a beautiful wife and beautiful children, yes? Yes. Close your eyes, think about them for two seconds. Just think about their faces and when they made you laugh and when they were being silly and you had to like, lose your mind with it but you bust out laugh and see that big smile on your face right now. I don't even need to ask you how you're feeling. I know right now you're feeling good. Agree? Yeah, 100%. My words created were your thoughts. It was yeah. your thoughts that created that feeling, and it was that feeling that will dictate what you do. So now that's a positive version of it. Now think of it as a negative version. So you had a traumatic childhood, you say, and what was that like for you? What you're doing is you're using words to create negative thoughts, negative thoughts, feelings. You're triggering and triggering and triggering and triggering. And I want to be very, very clear. I have the utmost respect for the majority of people in the mental health field. I say the majority of people. However, the people that are practicing purely CBT or talk-based approaches, mm. the reason I say it's antiquated and outdated is because CBT was created in, I believe, 1962, there, thereabouts, <laughs> and it was first used within the NHS in 2000. 2012, I believe. So a therapy from 1962 is a go-to approach for, let's say, the National Health Service, which it is. But in 1962, that coal fire over there was amazing. Funnily enough, today, that radiator is better. Yeah. You see, therapy is like the coal fire. We have moved on from that point. We have evolved. Society has changed, technology has changed, mindsets have changed, emotions have changed. But in this modern day and age when there's so much going on and there's so much to deal with, why are we reverting back to something that was created in 1962? A thing that's going to trigger you, that's going to traumatise you and it's going to make you worse because those words create those thoughts and those feelings. And that's why I have no time and have no place for conventional therapy or any form of talk-based therapy. Of course we're going to talk, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to get people to talk about present moment in time. Let me make another bold statement that people will get upset by, probably. Closure. Acceptance. It's overrated. Completely. If I could sit here and say to you, on the 4th of December 2007, that happened to you, well that car did that and it triggered you and that's where your anxiety comes from. Would it change your anxiety right now? No. No. All we've done is we've dig back into the past to right. find a reason for it. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter why you are what you are or how you got to where you got to. You are there. What matters is not what happened, but what you do. Mm. So instead of focusing on what happened that we can't change, by the way, why don't we focus on what we do? And we can change that. And when you change that, you think better, you feel better, you act better, and the world is a different place. So it gets people out of a, a, a cycle which is so common to everyone is, everyone. I should have said this, I should have done that. Even, even you know, yeah. the anxiety from work, you know, they, oh, I should have said yeah. this, I should have oh, lost that job two years ago, I should have done this, I should have done that. Okay. I should have told Agnes to go fuck herself. You know, people will <laughs> run through those yeah. issues. Maybe, sorry if you're called Agnes, but uh, you run through these. <laughs> Don't get me started on Agnes, she's the worst, <laughs> she's the worst. Um, but people do that and it's, and I, it's, 
It's the fact that so many people don't identify that that's where they are. They know they're unhappy in their lives as well, which, which I've seen even from our time working together, the number of times I've seen people, and it's not for me to say yeah, to yeah. anyone, it's like, um, have you, uh, are you all right? You know, are you, because I don't think you are. Oh, it's just, it's just how I am. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised at all. The, the world of social media, of course we're using social media as a platform, yeah. but for me, social media is a double-edged sword. If you've got family in Australia and you want to reach out to them on Christmas Day and say, hey, happy Christmas, that's great. But if you look at social media, for example, um, if this is wrong with you, you've got this. And if this is, it's di- <laughs> there's people with armchair diagnoses out there that are telling everybody there's something wrong with them and then they're putting posts and memes up. It's okay to be not okay. No, it's not okay to me, not okay. It's accepted that you're there, so let's do something about it. We have to change the terminology we're using. We Mm. have to stop digging into the past and traumatising people anymore. We need to accept where we are and change where we are to where we go because where you are will define where you go, Mm. not where you've been. Yeah. Do people come up to you in the street and say, oh, uh, you're Billy, I, I, I remember you when you were 15, you wee shit. No, people no. don't judge you in what you wear. People judge you in what you are. Mm. But as individuals, we judge ourselves in what we wear. Yeah. Nobody else is doing that apart from us. I'm just trying to get people to see that don't judge yourself in what you wear, judge yourself in what you are. And if you don't like what you are or there's something out of balance or out of sync, well, let's change that. Because believe it or not, it can be changed. And it can be changed like that. Change has always been instant. It will always be instant. It's the procrastination, the overthinking it, the worrying, the analysation, the catastrophization of it that takes a long period of time. But at some point you're going to say, enough, no more, I am done, I ain't doing that anymore. Smoking, drinking, drugs, gambling. People have woke up that have never been in therapy and said, right, I am done. Uh, no more, I'm done. And they've never went back to it. Mm. They made a choice at that point to change. And it's when we get everybody to that point, change happens pretty quickly. Always has. That's insane. No, in a good way. <laughs> in, a, in a good way. Um, if we, we were talking about, um, if, if we'd been going to give this episode a, a, a name, it would be Mental Health, The Truth. Mental I feel health. like I feel like we've already kind of kicked, yeah. kicked in the balls a couple of times. Um, but there is, there was terms that, not until we worked together, that I, and I know you've worked with so many people, yeah. I mean, all around the, all around the world. Uh, what were some of the names of people that you can tell us about? Because I know, obviously, you know, you've, been, you've gone to, you've flown all around the world, you've done yeah. all these type of groups. Just to give people a little insight as to who you are and what, what you do, so, um, oh, that we haven't already covered, yeah. really. So I've been, I wouldn't say I've been lucky. I don't believe in luck, I'll right. be honest with you. I, I, when people say, oh, I'm lucky, I'm like, no, you're not. Like, what? You're not lucky. You're a creator. Mm. Show me the man who wins the lottery without buying a ticket and I'll believe in luck. You see, there is no luck because in life we decide, we create and we take. Right. Decide, create and take. And I wouldn't say I am lucky or fortunate. I work really, really hard, man. I like throw everything at it every day. So the things that I got and the things that I created have been through hard work. And I have met millions of hard working people that have got really good things because I've created it and and luck wasn't in there. Hmm. Um, Have I been in the right place at the right time to come across some people? Yeah, of course I have. could call it destiny, fate, or whatever you want to call it, but I want to get to that place. Mm. And I was very um, privileged, would be the word, to be invited by um, the British Army as a whole. Uh, in fact, it was the Rifles Regiment. Uh, the Rifles Regiment are the biggest infantry unit in the British Army. And this particular unit um, was one of the hardest hit units uh, in, in the whole Afghan campaign and they lost quite a lot of guys. And the suicide rate, therefore, after it was the highest of any of the, the, the former regiments. So uh, I went over to Lisbon in Northern Ireland and, and I spoke to 850 soldiers uh, at one time about suicide and mental health and um, the feedback and the comments. And they were just like, I've never seen anything like you. I mean, oh my God, that makes sense. And it's about simplifying it mm. to everybody. Um, I then get contacted by a company called SEO Enterprises in New York. They are a social housing um, organisation that okay. houses people that are not fortunate enough to be on the property ladder or yeah. uh, the social housing situation in America and the um, local authority housing 
situation here is very similar. It's just different terminology, right? Right. Um, and they had uh, they had about a hundred staff, and they wanted to know how their staff could be more empathetic and understanding to the people they were dealing with. So I flew over to New York, uh, and but that's bizarre. I'm just stood in this room, and there's like all these Americans, and you know, I remember I remember thinking, right, well. In Scotland, when I go on stage or I go out and to do a show or an event, and I'm very gentle and I'm like, good morning, everyone, and thank you. So in America, I'm going to do it a little bit different, and I'm out there and I'm going like, is everyone happy to be here? And like, mm. yeah, and I'm like, no, nah, I never heard that. Are you happy to be here? Let me, and they're all screaming, and by the end of it, there's like 100 people in this room uh, and and a hotel in New York, stood on their chairs and waving banners and they're all cuddling me and they're trying to lift me up in the air and you're like, this is, this is bizarre. Um, and I've, I think I've got some videos on my Facebook page of it and they're like, oh my God. I mean, it's like <laughs> the whole over dramatic thing, but I just loved it. And I was well, like, they embrace the energy, more. they embrace the energy. It's the energy, energy yeah. yeah. Um, the, the events here, when we start them, we'll start at a, a nice, gentle, relaxed pace, but by the end of that event, I have people, I have 500 people in the concert hall, everyone, they're all stood in their chairs, they're all hopping, they're all clapping, they're all going for it, they're feeling it, they're embracing it, they're smiling, and they're walking out of that room and they are absolutely nailing the shit out of life. They are nailing it. Because it's the energy that you project that they, 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 they absorb. I've, uh, I was fortunate enough to come across you, um, Mr. Bowie from Clyde. Yes, um, yes. You know, uh, George. Um, I've never heard of him personally, um, but yeah, I've, I've heard of him. Just that, like, doof, doof, doof music and then give you a headache. <laughs> um, not quite Elvis, but, you know, um, uh, that's, we've all got our issues and I'm obsessed with Elvis, but anyway, that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, look, you've got a tattoo. Um, These worst people, they'd be obsessed with. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, um, I, I was fortunate enough to work with Gail, where yeah. um, Gail Portland and Kerry Katona come up and did some stuff um, uh, at the Park Hotel in Kilmarnock. Yep. Um, I have got some, some really, really prominent figures in the media and the music industry right now, but, you know, that's not, it's not where we're going with that, unfortunately. No. Um, so... I just keep going and believe it or not, someone says to me, how do you, how do you differentiate between, you know, someone like of that status and, you know, we, Ginny from, you know, the Hayek's, I don't, I don't, she's as important to me as he's as important to me. He's as important to me, she's as important to me. I could literally bring you my phone right now and show you a text from five o'clock this morning from a client who was perplexed at how they were feeling when they woke up. And you'll notice at three minutes past five, my reply goes. Mm. You'll notice at seven minutes past five, I'm on the phone to them. Everybody needs it. Everybody's the same to me. I treat everyone as my only one. Because if somebody had done that for someone I loved or someone I cared for, I don't know, maybe that someone would be here still. But they're not. No. So I'll do what they couldn't. And I continue to disprove the world of therapy. I get mocked, I get called out, I get called I'm a charlatan and a fake and nobody can do what he says he can do. Yeah, well, I can. Mm. And I give a shit and I care and that's the difference. This isn't a process to me. This isn't a tick box process and put them into that category or that category. This is my life. My life is serenity by Kevin. My life is helping people. And when you look at it like that, it's absolutely a joy to do every single day. And people say, you work 10 hours a day, you do six days a week, you must get tired. No, you must get tired at the thought of it, but I don't. I'll tell you what's tiring. Six months at a time in Afghanistan, sleeping in a metal hut with a bed made of rope and plastic, mm. eating cold food, peeing in a bottle and washing out a bottle, not the same bottle, by the way, which would be funny, there's movies for that, but not this one, <laughs> and not having any word of English spoke to MD for six months at a time and having about two hours sleep a day. That's tiring. That's tiring. You see, my office, this chair is comfy as shit, man. I've got water and coffee and I've got Just Eat app and I can have lunch and this isn't tiring. This is great. Uh, when people say you're living the dream, yeah, I really am. You can always see how passionate you're about it. And I, I'm not just saying that. You can always see how passionate about it and, and, how, you, and how you deal with people. The energy is so fantastic. The reason I asked about all the different places yeah. you'd been 
and you nailed it, was um, how, how mental health issues, and it's funny because even growing up, like, I'm sure my dad would have had yeah. mental health issues, my mum would have had mental health issues, and I know there's gonna be people out there going, my mum was, uh, my mum was a saint. My dad is like, no, well, in, in a rear view mirror, yeah. you know, and we shouldn't gaze too long in it, and I, I appreciate that, but it's like, um, it, it doesn't care what age you are. Mental health issues no. doesn't care what age you are, doesn't care what sex, gender, where you are, how much money you've got in your bank account, it doesn't care. So, when we're talking like a big event like the concert hall, and yeah. I know it's not your first time up to bat, you've done these events yeah. plenty of times, but uh, this one is very special because this is the first one after the pandemic like yeah. this one. And uh, so if, if I'm someone that's, I don't know, maybe they've seen one of the viral videos on TikTok, yeah. maybe they've seen this, maybe they've heard you on uh, Go Radio or with Gina, or they've seen the Daily Record articles yeah. or, or anything, and they're going, I'm going to buy a ticket. Because they're very reasonably priced, I should have said. Uh, they're very reasonably priced. They're buying a ticket to come along. Um, is there a misconception? Could people think, like, is this like a Tony Robbins thing or something? Like, because I know it's a completely different... No disrespect to Tony Robbins and his giant head and his giant teeth. Uh, it's ter ter terrifying looking, man. Um, what can people expect, though? So I'm in, I'm on my own, let's say. Yeah. I know I've... Going back to where I was, I know that something's wrong. Yeah. I know that something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong, but I know that something's wrong. I'm coming in, I'm sitting down, I've got my popcorn. Probably don't have popcorn. Uh, I've got my, I've got I can my, arrange it if you I've want. I've got my juice. I don't know what they'll have. <laughs> Maybe they've got, let's just say they're on their own. Right, they're on their <laughs> or, own. Or they're with a friend. What, what can they come to expect from an event like that? What, what, can, what can happen? One of the biggest misconceptions in life is um, knowledge is power. Right. Bullshit. Okay. Absolute bullshit. Knowledge isn't power. Knowledge is nothing more than information in your head. Yeah. And so many people have got knowledge. We live in a world right now, by the way, where we are drowning in knowledge. We are drowning in it. I guarantee you right now. You've been married for how long, Billy? 16 years. 16 years. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, that is longer than all of mine put together. <laughs> uh, but I decided to buy I guarantee you right now, I could get on the tick of the talk. Right. right, and I could find you a 20, 20 year old dish, 19 year old dish relationship coach who knows what you need to do right now to enhance your marriage. Oh, great. They have the knowledge, you see. We've all got knowledge. Everybody's got knowledge. Knowledge is power. We need to learn more, learn more, learn more. All we're doing is we're clogging the mind. Knowledge isn't power. What you do with that knowledge and how you act on that knowledge is the power. Knowing that you should challenge negative thoughts is great. But unless you challenge them, it won't make a difference. Knowing that you should get out and get some fresh air and get some melatonin, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, knowing you should release all these chemicals by these healthy behaviours won't make a difference if you don't do it. Mm. This event is not about knowledge. I've got an abundance of knowledge. Listen, if people want me to show them how intelligent I am, I'm happy to sit here and use massive vocabulary that will blow your mind. But it won't make a difference and it won't help anyone. Mm. What will help is when we take knowledge and we show them how to act. The event, I promise, is all about the action. And there'll be knowledge there, but it's how to act on it. The reason my events are different is because it's all about the action and less about the word. Hmm. We will start at the beginning, we will talk about what anxiety actually is, not what people think it is because they are completely wrong. We're going to show them about negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative emotions, intrusive thoughts, compulsions, panic attacks, intimidations, stress, what the hate, but we're going to do it. And we're going to talk about limitations, destructive belief systems, what I'm doing. Anything that's got a relation to anxiety, imagine a logical order to it. It starts at the, the toes and goes up to the top. I'm starting at the toes and we're going all the way everything will be done and there'll be an action to remove every single part of it and that's what it's about the action is it like tony robbins listen i can never compare myself to him the the man is the biggest thing in the world of you know motivation and leadership finance as well now um, and he's totally 
gone in a different direction from where he started. Mm -hmm. If I was going to be compared to anyone of that stature, you could probably compare me to an earlier version yeah. when the focus was on the passion and the help and the, you know, n not where it is now. So it's 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 completely different to that kind yeah, of event. Yeah, yeah. There's no screaming, there's no shouting, there's no big flashing lights and smoke machines and clowns <laughs> doing fucking somersaults down the aisle. Um, it's a, this is where we are, this is this, what's happening, boom. And the great thing about it is, I don't want to say what it is, but after lunch at two o'clock, foolish or not, I don't know, but I am going to attempt to do something that the world of mental health has never seen or experienced before, ever, especially in this country. It's going to be so big, it's going to be so mind-blowing that people that are in that room will absolutely change on it. Absolutely change. I have no doubt about it either. It's not a gamble, it's not a risk to do it. I know what's going to happen. I already foresee it. I run it, I run it, I run it, I run it. I know what's coming. And at two o'clock, I'm going to do something for Scotland that nobody has ever done in this country before. Not even close, actually. Oh my God. That's where that's going. That's intense. And it's an action. Oh, it's wow. Not, it's not me standing up saying, my name's Kevin and I'm a multi-award winning therapist with offices in A and England. Who gives a shit? Nobody cares about that stuff. The only person that cares about your badges or your buttons or your letters after your name or your awards, the only person that cares about that is the, the therapist. Mm. Most people sell themselves on award or on letters after their name or people they've worked with. Or, I don't. I sell myself on, I can help you. I met Gina McKee last night for the first time ever. Lovely lady. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing, right? Yeah. Amazing um, at what she does. Yeah, so amazing. At what absolutely. She does. Go radio phone me. But the thing is, um, <laughs> and this morning I wake up to a post um, from Gina, and it says this man is brilliant. Um, she, she's never met anybody like it in her life, and I'm like, that is a massive, massive compliment. Thank you. Um, and I'm like that with everybody. Will there be people out there that watch me and go, he's a dick? I don't like him. That's okay, you know, it's okay. I don't mind if you don't, if I'm not your cup of tea. I'm not naive to think my therapy is the only therapy. No, everyone needs a different approach. Yeah, yeah. And I alter my approach for certain clients. There's, there's clients in there that, you know, have never heard any form of profanity come out of my mouth in any way, shape or form. There's clients in there where every second word is profanity. Because everybody reacts different and you have to be able to read the person, engage the person and deliver to the person. The majority of therapists will be sat there and go, right, what's your name, what's your age, where you? and they don't even look up off their desk. You're like, it's a rude ass, man. Um, I actually sit, do nothing and watch that person. Because here's the great thing about, about individuals, they tell you who they are. They can, and they tell you who they are without even speaking. Hmm. You ask one question and watch those eyes or watch that mouth, watch that jawline, watch the pulse on the side of the neck, watch that finger go, watch the leg twitch, watch them get uncomfortable and move and you're like, right, don't worry, answer in it, I've got it. I can see the answer, you don't need to tell me it. And I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable, but I read people and I read the situation and I read them. Yeah. And that way I get much more from them than just a word. Because a word can say one thing, but the, the, the human body says a totally different thing. That's real, because you don't control that. You control that. Yeah. And I want the real. I don't want the, oh, well, life's okay. Uh, while well, you're picking your cuticle to, 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 to death, you know? Yeah. No, life's not okay. And you don't need to tell me it is. You can just be honest with me. And... One of the things I always say to people when you come to therapy is, look, this isn't a big, mad, crazy interview question and answer question and answer. I'm going to ask, 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 ask. Do you know what? You're an adult, I'm an adult. How's about we have a conversation and chat? Mm. And don't worry about what you say. Let me take what I need to take from what we get. Yeah. And that's how I work it. And, and that's what and makes that's, it so unique. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 it's amazing. Lots of people that we have watching this are from an alternative background. It's not that it's really got anything to do with anything, but uh, particularly men. Yeah. We have a lot of men. Um, I don't know if I suffered from this at one point, but there is the macho bravado of like, yeah. well, men, I mean, we, 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 just, we just suck this up and we swallow it down. Um, I've even seen you deal with this live. I even saw yeah. you deal with this, this, this live in a very unique way. Why do guys do this? And how can they even approach, consider, reconsidering their position? Because I can see firsthand, it's it's damaging. 
For me, there's a, there's a multitude of reasons. One of the biggest reasons, right, is uh, generational bias. Mm. And what I mean by that is I will acknowledge that in... I don't know, do I touch that microphone? Yeah, yeah all right, I'll be all right. I'll, it'll survive. It's a posh one. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're getting them, Ke I, We're getting Kevin some for Christmas. <laughs> I will acknowledge that in 2022, we live in a very different world in which we did in 1960. Mm. But when did your father grow up? Oh God. Um, 50s, 60s? He would have been 50s, 60s, yeah, that would have there been his, his peak. And that was weak to show emotion, it was weak, to, it was that generation. I'm not mm. saying that it was right or wrong, it was wrong, but it is what it was, that's how it was. The, you know, we're getting towards the cusp of the, uh, just past the end of the Second World War, guys were still coming home and they were still traumatised and they were all hidden away from society and it was weak to show emotion and it was one of those things. So that's how your father was. And how he was reflects onto you, and it's a very impressionable one for people that don't have fathers, school teachers, social workers, yeah. dominant male figures in the media, whatever it is, you know, grin and bear it. So the, the generation of our age are still dealing with the repercussions of our parents. And I don't agree with the statement of people still think it's weak to speak out. I think we are at the point now where our generation is changing, yeah. which means the generation in front of us, they won't have the same problem as what we have had. Because we are teaching our children to, do you know what, it's okay to talk about your emotion. Yeah. Listen, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to express how you feel and you're not wrong for that. We are teaching our children something different. It's an issue for our generation right now, but the generation moving forward, it won't be. Now, if you're in this generation and you've adapted to what your father has done to you and you're still doing this, it's weak to talk, don't show emotion, man up, you're an idiot. You might not like that, but you're an idiot. Because the idiot is the man that doesn't show emotion now. Hmm. And the strong person is the one that shows emotion. And sometimes you have to feel the feeling to get through it. You cannot diminish, you cannot avoid, you can be, we call them avoidance. Men are very heavily avoidant with hmm. emotional balance. Um, and it's like this. See that? Yeah. I saw that. You don't see that though. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Is that. But you're watching that. You're avoiding the reality. Yeah, yeah. And guys do it all the time. By avoiding it doesn't mean to say it's not happening. And we're getting to that point now where people are starting to understand it. Yeah. So we are teaching our children to be braver and to talk about it and to express how they feel. And it's an issue, again, I repeat for us at the moment, kind of, but the next generation, I breathe for them because I know they're not going to struggle like we have struggled. That whole uh, don't show weakness. Uh, if you're one of those guys that are doing that, yeah, you're an idiot, man. Um, and before you know it, you'll be in my chair. There you go. I think it's a... Right. And this is a perfect opportunity to jump in and tell you more about Kevin's event that he is going to be doing at the Royal Concert Hall December 3rd. He's going to have some incredible guests there. He's going to have TV presenter, uh, entrepreneur, radio presenter. Gail Porter is going to be there. He's also going to be talking to a good friend of mine, Gina McKee uh, from Go Radio. She is actually going to be speaking at the event as well. Gina has is a broadcasting legend, an icon of radio that is still going. Gina Gina's going to be doing this event at the Royal Concert Hall. Uh, listen, she can speak firsthand. If you've heard any of the stuff that Kevin's done over in Go Radio, Glasgow's own radio in Glasgow and the West, you can head over and check that out. Uh, some incredible stuff she's got to say. So check out the event. Tickets are still available. You can get them. Head over to uh, Serenity by Kevin. Just find them on uh, YouTube. Or YouTube? What am I talking about? Just find them on Google. Or, indeed, I will make sure the link is posted to his event. Tickets are reasonably priced, as Billy in the past or the future said. I'm not sure. Right, let's head back and see what the boys are talking about. Take it away, lads. Let's talk about... You were referring to actions that you give people. Mm -hmm. Like one of the one of the things I found so reassuring, and I'd done a, a little bits of NHS therapy before, mm -hmm. and I say a little bit like the gr grounding. Have you have you? Have, it's like oh, okay, so feel feel your <sighs> feel your thing in your toes. Now, I but out of context, just like oh, that's a thing. Um, but one of the things you do is. Um, I, I, the phrase I kept using was weapon, helping me weaponize yeah. my my uh, issues with my mental health. <laughs> um, so um, I think even in our first session, you went sending your recording. Yeah, we did. Uh, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say it was 
hypnosis. I, mean, I wouldn't say it was hypnosis. What would be a meditation almost in its own way? How would you describe what we did? I'm, I'm making a pig's dinner list, but almost on purpose. Cause what I do is I reprogram. There we go. And that would be the, the terminology that we would use for that, well, reprogram you. We will from this point on, I yes. promise. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, I had a recording to go away and listen yeah. that uh, reinforced what had happened earlier. It's like the difference between... I I'd remember putting it to my wife was... I remember I did 10 driving lessons yeah. with a driving instructor and didn't learn a bloody thing. All he did was went, that's an instant fail. That would be a fail. <laughs> didn't teach me. Are we, yeah, stopping our, are we stopping our cash machine? Right, OK, fair enough. And then I went to a, another driving instructor who had went, right, these are all ones. I want to get these all to fives. So every week we're going to go yeah. over the... And, and I instantly seemed like, oh, these are... There's a method to this. There's something yeah. I can wrap my little dyslexic head around as well. Um, the reprogramming that you yeah. do, I mean, it's not, there's, there's a lot more to it than that, but you, you help people manage themselves, re, yeah. almost reprogram themselves as an ongoing thing. Yeah. Um, it just seems so different to anything anyone was yeah. doing. Um, I've had a lot of success. I've had some fails. Okay. And... One of the fails, um, I was speaking to them, and I was like, well, what, what, what's happened? What's went wrong? You, you know, you're doing so well. They're like, oh, well, you, your programming didn't stick. And I'm like, my programming? <sighs> when you're relying on me to make your change, it means I'm doing all the effort, I'm making all the work, I'm getting all the benefit. So I don't want to do that. So how do I get it so you reprogram you? And one of the things that, you know, has always been there that wasn't, I never discovered that. I didn't create Ferry PR, you know, I've just streamlined it and twisted it and tweaked it to, to fit the modern mind. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we know for sure is that if you do an action or a behaviour consistently over a period of 21 days, it then goes from an action to a habit. Right. Tying your laces, brushing your teeth, making a knot, writing, reading, walking, talking, driving. You know, it takes around 21 days for an action to become a habit. Now, my therapy is shorter than 21 days. I only do, you know, either two week or four week blocks. And I think with a four week block, I think for the start to the finish, it's around about 21 days there, thereabouts. So what we do is we go to the subconscious, we reprogram and I put the thing there for them, but then they act on it, and 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 they actually condition and program themselves, as opposed to me doing it. Mm. I have never in my life in the world of therapy, coaching, motivation, or leadership, told MD what to do. Never once. In fact, in anxiety therapy, if you ask the, the, the people that have done that, I don't even use the word anxiety. Oh. Don't use the words depression, don't use the words... PTSD or compulsion, don't use any of those words. Because your subconscious don't know what that is. It just knows it's got a negative thing, a negative behaviour, a negative action. That's why my terminology is all thing, action, behaviour. Because the subconscious mind, when we do it, has about 10 of them. And it doesn't know what one we're talking about. So it just grabs a handful and does it. And that's why after a session, people are like, I'm sleeping better, I feel lighter, I'm not as angry, it's about five things have changed, and only wanted to work on the one. When, you're that, when you have that much ambiguity in your language patterns with a subconscious mind, it confuses it so much it just takes as much as it can. Mm. And then you get that person to be consistent. Consistency is your friend, of course, because consistency creates programming and then that becomes habitual. And 21 days for, for habits to be formed. And, and when I looked at it, I was like, that makes perfect sense. So why don't we do that? As opposed to, right, I'll see you next month. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was on a roll there. Yeah, well, I don't have time. I'll see you next month. Well, by the time next month comes, you've forgot everything that we spoke about in the first place. And, well, six-month therapy is one a month. You just kind of, like, you don't actually... Like, you tread water, essentially. I don't want them to tread water. I want people to swim. I don't only want them to swim. I want them to sprint and get to the end and get out of the pool, get dried and go into the world and live. Because that's what they want. That's what people deserve, to live a life with thoughts and control of the thought and control of the motion and limiting beliefs gone and openness and limitlessness. Not limited. Sit in your house, get upset, worry about the world, think. Look, whether you're nice, whether you're good, whether you're big, whether you're small, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, people are going to judge you anyway. Yeah. So you may as well just do what you do and let them judge. That's a them problem, not a me problem. I keep 
telling myself every time I get, as you know, I get told a lot, um, and every time I get it or every time somebody has something negative to say, I just keep saying, not my circus, not my monkeys. I don't give a shit. It is. What you think of me is a you problem. What I think of me is a me problem. And you know what? I think I'm all right. I think I'm a, like, a fairly decent guy. I don't, you know, I don't go about like, kicking heads off kittens or anything. I, I, I try and make my way in the world and, and help people. And you know, I'm happy with that. Um, if they don't, that's a them problem. So I don't really invest into what they think. And there's yeah. so many people, you know... It's an easy track to fall into. I can appreciate it. There's so it. many people just so obsessed with what others think of them. And they're like... And, and I get it a lot, but why, why can't I be as happy as them on Facebook? Why can't I have that? I've seen it on social media where they're away and they're doing this and they're doing this. And this is what I'll say to you about social media. Imagine, right, imagine you're in a really bad way and you're in this chair. Okay. And I want you to take your phone out right now and I want you to post what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're doing right now. And it would go along the lines of, I feel fucked, I'm in Ferris' room, I can't breathe, I don't know what's happening, I hope I get better, but I'm really scared. And you would post that. Would you ever post that? Never, never will you post the truth because people will see your vulnerability and then they will judge and it's one of your fears. So instead what people do is look at me with my baguette from, you know, Le Crosse Day. It costs 12 quid and it's one of the best baguettes in Glasgow and here's me at the pool and here's me with, you know, at the Ritz Carlton and we're having dinner and... People don't post the truth. They post perception so you don't see the truth. Unfortunately, people base their reality on that truth. I don't. Do you know what happy people are doing right now on social media? I think you do, but please tell us. Fuck all. I'm too busy being happy. They don't have time for social media. They're just being happy. If you watch out there and there's people posting the uh, living the dream and I'm happy and I'm this and I'm that. No, I want to reach out to those people and say, hey, you know, I want to help you and I want to actually give you the thing that you say you've got because I know you don't and I can see it in you. And we live in a, a world of false perception and, and, and that's just how it is with social media. I uh, really, really emphasise to my clients, let's come off social media during your therapy. During this process, don't go on it. Let's work on you. And at the end, decide what you want to do with it. And most of them at the end, don't even do it. They don't back on it. They're too busy going out and achieving and living life. It's, it's, it's really, really nice to see. It's a, a, social media is an, an intense thing. For me, it's work. I, I don't oh, so, it, yeah. I, I do try and share a little bit of personal stuff, but it's per, this is what I'm doing. This, it, yeah, it's you got to get you got to get a balance, particularly yeah. folk in, in my business. Uh, um, they are. 100%. I mean, we're all narcissists. There's no two ways about it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I use social media a lot. Um, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn and stuff like that. And of course, I use it to raise awareness and, yeah. and show people what can be achieved. But I know, but funny enough. Are you on my personal Facebook profile as a friend? Uh, I don't think so. No, I'm not. No. Do you know why? Why? Because nobody has. Because I don't post on it. There you go. Because I'm too busy being happy. I don't, I don't mind either. Somebody pointed that out the other day. Don't post on it. I don't, don't do post it. on it anymore. You know, I don't... My, my self-worth... Probably since last year, actually. My self-worth isn't based on how many followers I got. Now, I know you've got massive followings, and there's lots of you guys and girls out there that have got massive followings. Look, I'll be honest... <clears throat> I'm a normal wee boy for soul kits that did all right. And to have, you know, the guts of 45, 50,000 followers across all my platforms, listen to me, I am over the moon with it, but I don't base my self-worth on it and, and I don't go out and show everybody it. In my personal life, I have no followers, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just happy. As long as my kids see me and uh, I'm good with that. It's a good way to be, man. Yeah. It's a good way listen, to be. Listen, here's the truth. And I know we need to wrap up soon. But in a hundred years' time, right, if we're being honest, we're all going to be dead. And you're going to be some old name and some old stone and some old graveyard that nobody visits. And when you think about the reality of that, you have two choices. You can live in the moment, you can breathe, you can smile, you can get it right, you can get it wrong, you can learn and you can go again and enjoy what you've got and really embrace it. Or you can sit and worry about what might happen or what could go wrong or what people may say or may not say about you and you'll miss the present moment in time. And here's the truth, you only have present moment in time. So live it like it was your last, because one day it will be. Well, no gravestone for me. I want a Viking funeral. <laughs> even, even if it's just a pedal boat at Largs. In Largs, I was going to say Largs.
Just a got, pedal boat with the gonna, swans. Do you see the big wooden Viking and Lars were going to bury you? Right there. <laughs> oh, nothing that great. I don't want to make a fuss. A wee pedal boat would be just, just fine, just fine. Yes. One last thing I wanted to ask you, Kevin, and I hate the, hate the terms of, I mean, we, we talked about, we've talked about TikTok yep. quite a lot, not even, in t- not mainly anything that either of us are doing. I was like, have you seen this? Have yeah. you seen that? Um, and, but if, if someone was sitting right now and they were maybe just wanting to give themselves that little readjustment mm-hmm. or a little something, for someone that's never seen TikTok, doesn't know about breathing or anything like that, is there anything that you could say to someone, this could make a little difference to you yeah. right here, right now? Okay. I'm going to have to come up with something profoundly wise in a winter. Oh. Here's my go-to advice for anybody, anywhere, that wants to make a bit of a change in their life. Okay. Get a pen and a bit of paper and draw a line down the middle. Write control... And on the other side, no control. Write down everything that you control in your life, your actions, your behaviours, your thoughts, your feelings, your job, blah, blah, blah. And then write down all the things you don't control. The future. People's opinions, people's perceptions, tomorrow. All the things you don't control. Take a big, thick black marker and put a big cross through the no control and turn your attention to control and make it your only focus of the day. And that's my advice. There we go. Get yourself a pen and a bit of paper right now. Kevin, thank you so much. You're very uh, welcome. Thank very you Very so much, much looking forward to uh, the event December 3rd at the Royal Concert Hall. But don't worry, Billy from the past, or is it now the future? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. He's going to tackle all that. What a brilliant episode. Listen, get yourself along. Check out Kevin on social media as well. All the incredible stuff that he's got coming up. And just have a little listen. See see if he can help you in any way, shape or form. I guarantee you that if you need the help and you're looking for it, Kevin can help. I can assure you that. Listen, fantastic opportunity. Thank you again to Kevin and his team for giving us that little opportunity. And we are going to be catching up with them maybe at some point in the future. Make sure to check out that event December 3rd. Talking of events, don't forget you can still get your tickets for the biggest party of 2023 and it is just starting the Bra, Beard and Mush Tash Championships. Get your tickets and join us at the Dry Gate next year. It's going to be an incredible night. Remember the categories are open so why not enter your face or your beard more to the point. Why not enter it in one of the amazing categories? Come along, have some drinks, have some catch-ups, and have some fun. We're going to have some great judges that we're going to announce in the next couple of weeks. And you can join us at that event at the Dry Gate next year. Right. Huh. Nearly out of breath. That's all we've got time for on this episode of Broadcast. We are going to be back next week uh, with another episode. You know, it's on the eve of one of ICW and Saint Championship Wrestling's biggest wrestling shows of the year, Fear and Loathing. I think we might do this. I think we might combine, right? I think we might combine me, Tosh, and a wrestler. And just talk about wrestling for a day. Eh? Talk about wrestling. Think about that. We can call it the Bra Brawlers episode. So I tell you what, that's going to be the next episode. A uh, little bit of a wrestling team to it. Who will be our special guest from the wrestling world? You'll have to tune in and find out. We'll tell you on social media during the week. Don't worry about it. Right, that's all we got time for on broadcast. If you want to catch up with me and see what I'm up to in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be at, uh, well, let me think, I'm going to be at Troon Concert Hall hosting Bring it On LOL Comedy's huge event. Myself, Mark Jennings, um... Scott Agnew and the wonderful Larry Dean. That's going to be at True Concert Hall on the 19th. I'm at Wild Cabaret in Glasgow. You can check that out as well. And then I'm going to be at Fear and Loathing. But don't forget, if you head over and check out my social media, you can see all the tickets for the live shows and events I've got coming. I'm going to update them. I'm going to update them because there's loads of cool stuff coming up. So, aye. That was convincing, wasn't it? Right, head over and check it out. And I will see you next time on broadcast. May I say, that's a smashing blouse you have. We'll be right back.